Today's pattern has got an interesting story. A lot of y'all have probably heard of the Silver Doctor. It's a full dress salmon fly, been around probably 150 years or so. But most of us have probably never tied one. The pattern does use 24 different materials, a lot of which many of us wouldn't have anyway. But I found an interesting take on the Silver Doctor in Fly Patterns of British Columbia, which is a book about Roderick Haig Brown. And he talks about when the Silver Doctor made its way out west, which was the early 1900s. And it was a pretty popular fly, but it didn't get fished a lot because it was really expensive to either buy or tie. And tying it took forever. But in 1935, a guy named Brian Williams wrote about the fly and said, hey, anytime I'm mentioning the Silver Doctor in my books, I'm talking about the local Silver Doctor, which is kind of a stripped down version of the original, only uses eight materials, and it's pretty much tied for fishing and, you know, instead of for looks. And that's the one I'm gonna tie for you today. But I am making one variation. Instead of the blue hackle for a throat, I'm gonna change it to green because it's almost December. I'm kind of making this one a Christmas theme fly. But the original, local Silver Doctor, it's a pretty cool fly. And if you wanna tie it like the original, just keep the throat blue. So there it is in the vise, a pattern called the Local Silver Doctor from Fly Patterns of British Columbia. Now, it is a pretty flashy fly, though it's not really all that hard to tie. I'm gonna be tying this on a size eight. This is a one extra long, one extra strong barbless wet fly hook. Black thread, this is a 140 to deer. I'll just catch it in somewhere in the first third here. And the first thing I'm going to catch in is some oval tinsel. This is a small and silver. I've got about six or seven inches here because this is going to be our tag and a rib. And I got a little piece right there. My goal here is just to keep this parallel to the hook as I go back. Don't have to do real tight wraps. You just, you know, if you keep it consistent going back, you will avoid that little corkscrew effect. Okay, so where my thread is right there, and let's go maybe one more turn back. That's gonna be the front of the tag. And what I'll do here, take a few wraps back for however long I want this tag to be. I'm thinking about maybe four wraps of the tinsel. And so where my thread is, that's gonna be the front of the tag. Where this is is where I'm gonna start it. But before I do that, I'll take three big open wraps just to get my thread out of the way. Now let's wrap this up here. Just touch and turns four. If that works for you, you might want to do five. Just be the judge of that. Okay, that's four. I think that's all I'm going to go with. Now I'll back these three wraps off and my thread is right here where I want to catch this off. Okay, let's go one more really tight wrap. We don't have to be that economical because we do have a big fuzzy butt coming up here in just a second. So go ahead and take your thread up front and we're going to catch in some flat mylar tinsel. Gold on one side, silver on the other. I want the silver showing so I'm going to catch it in with the silver toward the hook here. And just like we did with that rib, I'm trying to keep it consistent on my way back. Okay, now notice that we're not going all the way back. I'm gonna take my next wrap or two behind this. And I kinda, well, this is a little tricky right here. And that first one I did, can't remember how I did it, but we've got a tail before the butt. Golden pheasant tip, it's just something like this. And what I'll do, I'll grab them by the tips and then snip them off. That way your tips will keep aligned. And it's not a big tail, maybe eight or 10 fibers here. So let's just try to catch this in right here. Keep this body and rib out of the way if I can. Okay, I think that's enough of a tail right there. Let's go ahead and snip the excess up front. And now put a good bit of wax on it because I'm tying this for the most part as it was tied in Haig Brown's book, and that calls for a red seal. So this is actually red seal's fur, which I got from some guy on Etsy. I know a lot of people won't have this, 
and it's kind of a pain to, to dub if you don't put it in a, a loop. If you don't have this, something fuzzy like an angora goat, maybe even a wool will work here. But, you know, I mentioned that we have a big fuzzy butt and we are going to have this big, big one right here. And we might end up trimming some of it here in just a second anyway. So let's go ahead and just wrap this up. It's gonna be six or eight turns right here. After we get some where we're laying it down, you can try and tighten it back up a little bit if you want. Might not work, but it might help a little bit. Okay, we're getting all over the place here, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this and then take my thread up front where I'm gonna stop this body. And we're probably gonna have some trimming. I got fibers going all over the place there. So let's grab the, the flat tinsel that we're gonna wrap up. There we go, silver side up. And my goal here will be just to wrap this one turn right in front of the other without any of that black showing underneath. I don't usually overlap these because you might end up with a little uh, ripple that you end up propagating all the way up through the front. So I just put one right in front of the other. Now, two or three tight wraps there, we can snip this. And we'll counter wrap this rib. I'm not sure if you need to counter wrap it, but in the picture it was, so I will. And now if you wanna clean up this butt a little bit, I guess would be the, now would be the best time to do that. Just trim a few of these. Okay, that's good enough for me. Now, if we were gonna tie this originally, how Haig Brown had it in the book, we'd use a blue silver doctor for the throat. But since it's almost December, I'm kinda of going with the Christmas theme, I'm gonna go with some green. Now, it's not a huge tuft, but it does give us a little flash of contrasting color. So I'll put it in my fingers, spin it up a little bit, just to unmarry these barbs. And I'm not gonna to go too long, probably not to the point of the hook, but you certainly could if you wanted to. We'll do a two or three wraps right here and then check it. Okay, I don't want it coming down that far. Let's see if we can prop these up just a little bit more. There we go, I like that. Let's trim the excess up front. Now we've got two components for the wing. The first one is red, some kind of flight feather, swan, goose, duck. This is duck, and they're pretty thin slips. And they were laying, they weren't traditional wet fly. They were laying a little bit flatter and about to the bend of the hook. So let's go about right there. See if we can get this. I'm pinching the feathers and the hook at the same time. Do a light pinch wrap right here, pull tight coming up on this side. We'll do another wrap and see, make sure they, they haven't spun around too much on us. I think they're fine right there, so let's do a couple of tight wraps going forward and snip this front piece off. Okay, I think we're gonna be fine right there. I'm gonna go back with a couple of medium wraps just to try to get this laying a little flatter like that right there. Okay, now one tip, if you're trying to make a really clean head, You've got one of these singeing tools. This works pretty well. You know, you just turn it on. It should get red right there. And then just touch it to it. And it will, you know, singe those feathers down. You might be able to get a cleaner head. Just be careful not to burn through your thread. Now, top component of our wing, just some teal or mallard flank fibers. And according to the one picture I saw, it wasn't really a lot. So I don't know how many fibers this is. Um, 12, 14 or so, about the length of the, the red wing. Let's just try to lay this right here and pinch them all. Now we can do a pretty tight pinch wrap right there. And I want them laying a little bit closer to that red, so let's try to adjust that with a few medium wraps going back right here. And there we go, I think that's gonna work. We can do a few tighter wraps going forward. Now, 
this is gonna make a little bit of a mess on my eye right here. So I'll cut this about as close as I can get it, which not terribly close. Maybe we can singe this just a, a little bit to give us a cleaner head here. We'll see if that's gonna work. Now, one trick for this, let your thread flatten out. So counterclockwise spin right here, and then back to the eye and just, you can get a little bit of a cleaner head with flatter thread. So I think that's gonna work okay. Those lumps will disappear when we put some head cement on it. And there we go. Take a look, see if you have any cleanup. Could probably work on those wings a little bit, but you know, I'm not gonna worry about it. I think it's a pretty neat fly. It's kind of fancy looking, but really not all that hard to tie. So I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.